Hi everyone. This video provides an answer to the question, what is a flame? In order to understand exactly what a flame is, we first must define an atom, a molecule, and a chemical bond. An atom is a very small unit of matter, such as oxygen, hydrogen, lead, or gold. Every single piece of our bodies is made of these tiny atoms. The number of atoms in a 150-pound person is a 7 with 27 zeros following it. A chemical bond holds two or more atoms together to form a molecule, such as water. Most of you know a water molecule's chemical formula as H2O. A water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms attached to one oxygen atom by two different chemical bonds. Other types of molecules you guys may have heard of include carbon dioxide, or CO2, and alcohol, or C2H5OH. Every molecule in the universe is made of atoms and is held together by some type of chemical bond. The exact way in which chemical bonds work is fascinating, and those of you who are interested in science will learn about it in high school when you study chemistry. But for now, just remember that chemical bonds hold atoms together to form molecules. Now, keep in mind that not all chemical bonds are equal. They have different strengths. Let's discuss what happens when energy breaks a molecule with weak bonds into its individual atoms, which then rearrange themselves into molecules with much stronger bonds. In order to clearly understand this concept, envision a magnet stuck to a piece of iron. If you had to separate these two items, you'd exert energy from your muscles to pull them apart. But what would happen if you attached that same piece of iron to a much stronger magnet? Well, the iron would attach to the magnet with a loud slap. That sound you'd hear is a form of energy. In fact, the energy released by combining the iron and stronger magnet would be much greater than the energy consumed by your muscles when you separated the iron from the weaker magnet. In other words, this process of releasing a weak magnet from iron and reattaching that iron to a strong magnet produces excess energy. Think of it as an energy profit. This is precisely how the burning process works. When observing a flame, the light we see and the heat we feel is the excess energy released after atoms from molecules with weaker bonds separate and then recombine into molecules with stronger bonds. Now, let's look at a specific example. Keep in mind that all flames need oxygen, a fuel source, and enough initial energy to break apart the molecules with weaker bonds. In our example, let's take oxygen molecules from the air in the form of O2 and hydrogen gas as our fuel source in the form of 2H2 or two molecules of hydrogen gas, each molecule containing two hydrogen atoms. By adding an initial energy source, such as another flame, to ignite this mixture, two molecules of H2 break apart into four atoms of hydrogen, and one molecule of O2 breaks apart into two atoms of oxygen. When these six atoms are free-floating, they will likely move to the direction with the strongest pull. It turns out that the strongest combination of hydrogen and oxygen is water, or the H2O molecule. So, the four hydrogens and the two oxygens combine very quickly into two molecules of H2O. As all of the atoms slap together with force, they emit a large amount of energy. Most of the energy is used to restart this cycle by breaking apart other hydrogen and oxygen molecules. 
but the excess energy both creates heat and causes individual atoms and molecules it touches to emit light. Now, we couldn't feel the heat or see the light from just one of these reactions, but remember that the burning process consumes billions or trillions or more of these molecules all at the same time. So simultaneous and continuous reactions of numerous molecules allows us to feel their combined heat energy as warmth and to see their combined light energy as a flame. Hold on a second, some of you may say. The magnets you mentioned released sound energy, but the molecules in this example released heat and light energy. Why the difference? Well, we would need many, many more magnet slaps to turn the total sound energy into heat energy. For example, the surface of the sun is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but the sounds on the surface of the sun are so loud and so numerous that they heat up the sun's corona to millions of degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, back to flames. So the story isn't over quite yet. We still haven't determined why flames have different colors and shapes. First, the colors. Different molecules and atoms, when energized, emit different colors. The molecules and atoms in a candle flame release blue, yellow, and orange light. Holding copper above a flame would produce green light, and neon gas, when energized, emits red light. The exact reason why different atoms and molecules release different colors when energized is another topic you'll learn more about in high school chemistry class. Regarding a shape of a flame, say a candle flame, one may wonder why it always looks like a teardrop. The answer is gravity. If you were to hold a rock and a ping pong ball underwater, the rock would sink to the bottom and the ball would shoot to the surface. Similarly, because cool air is denser and heavier than warm air, cool air falls to the ground while warm air rises. So what does this have to do with a flame? Well, a flame rapidly heats the air around it. In a process known as convection, that hot air collects into a thin column centered above the flame and shoots upward, like the ping pong ball, slightly stretching the flame vertically, while the cooler air moving down the sides of the flame slightly squeezes it horizontally. This vertical stretch and horizontal squeeze on the flame creates a teardrop shape. In space, however, gravity has very little effect. If a rock and a ping pong ball were released in a floating clump of water in space, then they wouldn't move. Similarly, in the space shuttle, denser cool air and less dense warm air wouldn't separate. Therefore, without any air movements pulling up on the flame and squeezing in on it, a flame takes the shape of a sphere. So, in summary, when observing a flame, the light we see and the heat we feel is the excess energy released after atoms from molecules with weaker bonds separate and then recombine into molecules with stronger bonds. The color of a flame depends on the atoms and molecules in and around it, and the shape of a flame depends on the presence of gravity. Thanks for listening, guys, and I hope everyone appreciates the fascination of science as much as I do.